Hi guys, I'm Ride, your Chief Espresso Officer, and welcome to 2021. Let's say goodbye to 2020 and start the new year off on my first coffee review from a very special place around the other side of the world in Africa called Tanzania. Tanzania is located on the eastern seaboard of Africa with the Indian Ocean to its right and almost engulfing Rwanda and Burundi to its left. But even though Tanzania is 40 times larger than Rwanda, it's not as well known when it comes to specialty coffee. In fact, Tanzania only produces about three and a half times the full production of coffee that Rwanda makes, which says a lot about the Rwandan coffee and how great it is. And whilst Rwanda was only introduced to coffee in the 1900s and started making commercial in about 1930s, Tanzania has had coffees since about the 16th century, except that most of it was only allowed to be grown by certain tribes, like the higher tribe in the northern mountain regions of Kilimanjaro for most of the time. But it wasn't until the Dutch colonization happened that coffee became more widespread and grown all over the countryside. And here's an interesting fact for you. The Haiyan tribe didn't actually drink the coffee that's pretty crazy, I know, but they actually just boiled the beans down, mixed them with some herbs and spices, and created a kind of chewing stimulant that they used throughout the day. And it wasn't until around the 19th century that the local laws were relaxed a bit and that they could start propagating coffee all over the country. And that's when they introduced the Arabica variety instead of the Robusta one, which is quite dark and bitter. And the Arabica is a sweeter, softer, and way more nuanced coffee. The wilderness in Tanzania is so rich and so diverse, going from the tallest single standing mountain in the world, Mount Kilimanjaro, which is a dormant volcano, and there's so much rich soils there, and some of the most expensive coffees in the world are grown on the side of Mount Kilimanjaro. But this particular coffee is grown in the southern highlands, in the Songwe region, on a farm called Elton Farm at 1700 metres above sea level. And the farm itself is centuries old, possibly the oldest colonial farm in southern Tanzania. Elton Farm is owned by a Dutch farmer called Eric Smeets, who bought the farm in 2006. But he's actually spent a lot of time setting up trade agreements with the local farmers because he processes a lot of coffee through there, not just from his own farm, but all the surrounding farmers. So he has been pioneering better processes to create much nicer organic coffees like this one here, and also setting up better trade agreements for the farmers to get them paid earlier and more money. So this particular lot of coffee is two different varieties, Kent and Bourbon. And this particular coffee is a perfect example of the processes used to create exquisite flavors in an organic coffee. So they use an intercropping strategy. So that means they put in a couple of coffee trees in a row and they intersperse them with legumes and mango trees and banana trees. And that gives it shade, natural shade. And shade grown coffee, as this is referred to, is very important when making organic coffee because the shade not only provides shelter for the trees, but it also provides a natural environment for a little ecosystems of insects and birds and bees that pollinate the coffee trees, which makes it basically the next best thing to a wild forest. Now, as I mentioned before, Eric Smeets is working with the farmers to get them more coffee per kilo, as well as pioneering a great organic method. And this particular coffee is sun-dried or it's natural coffee, which means they raised sunbeds, they allow the cherries to sit on raised sunbeds and slowly turn them until the moisture content it gets far enough down that they can be packed and shipped off to us. What this also does is allow all of those sugary goodness to go straight into the seeds themselves. And what this means for us is that there's gonna be a lot more of that vibrant and sugary sweetness in the coffee itself. So, without further ado, let's get to our favorite part, the tasting. So I'm gonna use 22 gram in this recipe, and I wanna try and get out about 40 grams, or close to 40 grams, out of this extraction. Oh, very syrupy, like honey. It's pretty intense. Like if you want an intense espresso, 
this is definitely for you. I would say there's like a chewy caramel lingering on the end of my mouth there as well. Mm, that's delicious. This is gonna translate so nice to milk because the acidity is bright, but it's light. It's like a, a raspberry sort of acidity. And when I add milk into this, I think I'm gonna love this. So let's get to it. Well, clearly my latte art skills are a little bit rusty since the end of the last year, but I hope my coffee making skills are still the same. So let's try this on milk. Mm. Yeah, that's delicious. It's like a milk chocolate caramel milkshake. I mean, there's so much chocolate and caramel flavors, that sweetness, that intensity is really translated into the milk quite nicely. I just love it. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. Yeah. So let's recap on this amazing coffee from Tanzania. It's from the Elton Farm of the Songwe region. It's a Kent and Bourbon variety. It's grown at 1700 meters above sea level using the natural processing method. And you will experience flavors of honey, chewy caramel, and chocolate when you're adding milk. And even better, it's 100% organic coffee. So we're only selling the coffees throughout this month. So jump online and grab yourself a bag or come on in store and try some and explore the world through this delicious Tanzanian coffee. I'm Ride, your Chief Espresso Officer. Enjoy your brew.